One of the world's most highly anticipated art shows is back. After a two-year hiatus, the Darwin Aboriginal Art Fair returned to Darwin, featuring a record number of artworks, art centres and visitors to the fair. Located at the Darwin Convention Centre over a massive three days, this year's fair displayed the works of over 1,000 artists and designers from remote desert to coastal regions and rural to urban communities across Australia, showcasing the diversity of colours, materials, styles, techniques and mediums the individual artist uses. So I'm a director of Wadayaka Art Centre and this lady is here. So we go to Art Centre and like doing works and helping painting and helping old people and old people show us how to do the paintings and show us how grandmother or grandmother you know or Lord and grandmother used to old people teaching us how to do these paintings but it's from grandmother yeah oh different families like you can do these paintings here Oh, uh, this, you know, the old people, so you do this one here. That's your grandmother's painting, you can do this one here. And the other families, members, they do that too. Yeah. Well, I do my painting, like, for foot seat. Yeah. Streaming, I mean, sorry. Foot streaming. That's the little black thing, the seats when it's get it from the crown. Yeah. That's the kangaroo was walking, looking for seats, but they are food for kangaroos. And that one there, it's pushed tomorrow. Yes, younger ones. Put the virtues and it, they can learn from grandmother. Yeah. Helps them connect to culture. Well, connected to culture. Yes. The Darwin Aboriginal Art Fair allows thousands of visitors from across Australia and the world a chance to purchase authentic Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander art, fabrics, ceramics, carvings and jewellery from the artists, as well as experience traditional culture, languages and dance all under one roof. Hello, my name is Rose Wilfred. I'm one of the artists. I work for Numbua Numburundi Art Centre. I was start doing weavings when I was 13. My grandma, she taught me. I do other arts, like weaving basket, floor mat, Sometimes I do ghost net bake. The ghost net bake we call um, marine killer. The animal they used to get caught. Also, I do cat loggings. And I'm happy to come here in this Darwin Aboriginal Art Fair. All this color I, we get from the bush. It's, it's not from the store. We collect all this from bush. We died. We collect um, pandemics, the natural color, and also the bush dye color. Yeah, it is very interesting, like, especially for kids, so they, ca they can't learn. Sometimes we do culture week at school. We teach them how to do weavings. We're showing them. This is the Darwin Aboriginal Art Fair 16th year. And for those who couldn't physically make it, the DAF now has an online platform where people can view all of the performances and art that DAF has to offer and could purchase their favourite pieces of art on display with a click of a button.
a common theme within the many artworks on display focused on issues affecting the artists and their communities, such as culture, land, food and animals, poverty, the effects of climate change on country and passing knowledge down to the next generation. Lockhart River Art Centre is located in the Lockhart River Aboriginal community on the eastern Cape York. Um, west to Lockhart is Weeper. It's about 850 kilometres to the nearest town, which is Cairns, uh, and it's about an hour and a half flight direct uh, from Lockhart to Cairns. We're so excited. It's an important uh, part of our annual art calendar. Uh, three days of sale accounts to about 9% of our total share of business. So to get 9% of our share of uh, total share of business in three days at Australia's and quite possibly the world's top indigenous art fair uh, is phenomenal. We have 26 registered artists but we're also open to community members that come in and out uh, from time to time. Uh, it comes from six different clan groups uh, within the Lockhart River community and uh, the age range of artists uh, at this point in time is mid-30s to uh, early 80s. Uh, the gender breakup is 70% of our artists are all female, so all mums and aunties and nanas and then the balance of that is made up by the men. We actually have five uh, five categories of artworks. Uh, paintings is the main category. Um, it's all done acrylic on canvas or acrylic on uh, linen. Uh, from time to time the artists go out on country and also collect ochre and um, they have a, a technique that they combine that with the acrylic uh, to have on uh, both surfaces. We also have uh, wood carvings. Uh, we also have um, uh, jewellery making, traditional basket weaving and print on uh, liner prints as well. The art in Lockhart River is contemporary, um, so it's a contemporary take on uh, the Aboriginal identity and of course they have relations also spinning up into the islands, in, into T Torres Straits as well, but it's predominantly Lockhart River. Lockhart River is, uh, is identified as the Sand Beach people, the Sand Beach country. Um, the thematic works vary, so vary from um, uh, landscapes of the country, so from sand to rainforest. Um, they also paint about um, traditional uh, important events, a transition of young men, women from uh, young into early adulthood, uh, initiation process, uh, about land boundaries um, and about um, stories that they have learned uh, through song and dance. We're based in Pilbara, in the Pilbara. We're from Port Hedland, or South Hedland really. Um, so our art studio, uh, we're, very, we're a very open art studio. We have about 100 artists that come to us, all from different, different nations and like different areas. Uh, we're very yeah, welcoming and open. Yeah, so we definitely look forward to DAF and other art fairs because it definitely does help us and it gives us that income boost that we need to help us. Yeah, um, and the artists love it. We use acrylic paint, just solely acrylic paint. Uh, we use two types of canvas. So we have canvas and then linen. We've been told like so many times that we, our colour range is just amazing. And we like to think of that too. Like we, we pride ourselves on our colour, I think, and the artists love it too. A lot of them like to keep their, that colour of the land and stuff and paint true to the uh, land. So a lot of our artists do paint their land, their country, uh, a lot of it aerial view and their own interpretation of it. But then we get some artists who paint what they see and they like to copy things. We mostly have older ladies that, sit, that come every day, but we have a range from, uh, our youngest is under 10 probably, and then our oldest, probably about 90, like, you know. So we have a range and just so many. <laughs> so we have artists from um, all our communities. So we, uh, Gapitua Cultural Centre actually represents all 18 Torres Strait Islander communities and two NPA communities of um, Saisia and Bamaga. So in our store we have, um, I guess, artists with different mediums. 
a canvas, uh, wood carving, uh, sculpture, ghost net, uh, what else, beading, glass beading work, um, and lino print and sketch work, um, etching, sorry. So yeah, so really a, a big variety of artwork that we have on display, yeah. A lot of the um, art pieces are of artists interpretation of home, so how they interpret their life, um, their cultural practices, what they find interesting in their, um, yeah, I guess in their day-to-day -day activities. So they express that through their artwork. And um, yeah, that's really on display. And also, I should say, also our social history. So sometimes um, lager boats or um, social history things that happen through a through history of the, of the region that's also on display in the art and what we have on the stall here. Yeah. These two are, um, I guess, digital artwork by Jimmy K. Thayde from Erub Island community, so Eastern Island cluster of the Torres Strait. And um, he's really um, using his digital art week, uh, artwork sorry, um, and putting it onto canvas. So, you know, usually you see artwork on Instagram, on that digital platform, but people can't have a tangible copy to take home. So it's quite new for him and for us to actually sell that, and we're really excited for him to put, um, I guess, those pieces. So the, for him, the nam, the turtle, and also the uh, dabor, the Spanish mackerel, onto canvas, and putting his that iconic, um, I guess, lino printing on top of that art piece. So quite a unique piece that says, that's his, his style, so that's pretty deadly for us too. Mm. It's deadly for us, um, for Gabpito to come to, uh, to DAF, just so we can um, expose our artists um, to this space. So usually, I didn't mention before, but we also bring um, some Torres Strait Islander artists with us to get, um, DAF is not, not only our staff, we also bring our uh, Torres Strait Islander dance troupe over from the islands here. So for us, it's really a space where, as Torres Strait Islanders, we can celebrate who we are in this space, and we're so welcome um, by the Larrakia families and also DAF families, so we're thankful. Um, but it's just, yeah, to bring them to this space to know that, you know, it's such a deadly, internationally renowned space that we can celebrate our art, um, but also people can know about us, so we can continue the conversation here or back home. The Darwin Aboriginal Art Fair coincides with two other major Aboriginal art and fashion events, the Country to Katua Fashion Show and the National Indigenous Fashion Awards. Both events saw record numbers of attendees and participants and is the first fair to be back at the Darwin Convention Centre after the COVID pandemic struck, causing DAF to close its stores and go online, allowing the artists and art centres to show and sell their pieces while staying in communities and keeping safe. Keep putting your hands together.
One of the highlights of the Darwin Aboriginal Art Fair is the many cultural activities throughout the three days, from workshops, panel discussions and traditional dances. It's about Mother Nature. Mother Rain um, plays a dominant part in our life in, in the Torres Strait in all seasons of, of the year. Um, so those want to perform the rain dance. There are two, we, we've got a few families on TV that do the 
crocodile dance, so we'll do one, and then one family, and then... fish with it, and uh, some of them for fighting. Yeah, let's say uh, natural oka, natural oka. So we get the uh, white and yellow from the cliff, and we get uh, yellow, one in the five times red, and the four colors we got. The uh, onward, for painting onward, and I'm so I put glue on the paint so I stuck it onward. Uh, it's just a story like a uh, TV legend like Porcupali and Tapura, I just say a TV legend. Yeah, story. Been in life for many, many years now. Yeah, and we still got to carry on from this generation to this generation. Garrigan Art Centre is based in North Queensland uh, in a small town called Cardwell based on Gitame country which is based between um, Cairns and Townsville so we're midway of North Queensland. We have our signature pieces which are our ceramic bogle. We've also brought with us our traditional bogle, our various ceramic pots, paintings, weavings, um, our licensed merchandise and jewellery. The Boggle um, is our fire stick tool. Um, it's in the, um, the form of the fire spirit and it's something very unique. All the shape and the form is very unique to North Queensland rainforest culture. DAF's important to us because we we're able to network with our other art centres. We have an amazing platform where we can uh, showcase the uniqueness of rainforest culture, um, not only just to uh, a territory market and the, the tourists here and the, the consumers here, but also online with their digital platform to an international market. We've had some great success over the years, even during COVID. And so it's something we'll always continue to support because they support us. The only national event of its kind, DAF has secured a reputation as one of the country's most significant and internationally recognised arts events. A space to come together, meet the artists and ethically purchase from over 70 Indigenous owned art centres. DAF is free to attend and 100% of all sales made go directly back to support the artists and their community.
come and experience the rich diversity of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander art, design and culture at the Darwin Aboriginal Art Fair. Returning August 2023 to the Darwin Convention Centre, bigger and better than ever before. On Larrakia Country and online.